Okay, so we're back talking about um, <clears throat> differences between rods and cones in terms of convergence in the retina. We've said that. Uh, well, there's really a lot of convergence just in general in the retina, um, but there's more convergence for the rods than there is for the cones. And what does that mean exactly? It just means that um, many rods send their signals, or many rods synapse onto um, a single ganglion cell, whereas um, cones, not so much, especially cones um, in the fovea, the fovea, the part of the eye, part of the retina, that um, where we have the greatest visual acuity, right, where we'll take a look at, at why we have the greatest visual acuity there in a second on the next slide. Um, but foveal cones have really no convergence in the sense that each cone gets its own ganglion cell. And so ganglion cells receive input only from a single cone. This ganglion cell is not receiving any input from any of these other cones over here. Okay, so let's first, before we get into talking about um, uh, visual acuity, ability to see detail, let's talk about um, sensitivity to light. So we know from what we've talked about just back in the dark adaptation lecture that our rods are more sensitive to light than cones are. It's the reason why rods um, are more useful in the dark than cones are. It's why we rely on our rods for night vision. So the reason for that is because of what we're talking about here, is because of the fact that um, there's a greater amount of convergence in the retina for rods than there is for cones. And let's take a look at why that is. Um, so here, as we've said before in the last video, in order for um, the signals, um, basically from the outside world, to make it to your brain, in order for your brain to know that you're looking at something like light, um, not only did the light, does this light need to stimulate the rods, but the rods need to stimulate ganglion cells enough so that those ganglion cells pass that message on up to the brain. If this ganglion cell doesn't fire, it's as if you're not looking at anything. Your brain has no way of knowing there's something out in the environment. So in order for signals to make it to the brain, this ganglion cell that we've drawn here needs to fire. And so for the sake of this demonstration, let's just assume that this ganglion cell requires um, 10 units of activation, whatever that means, 10 units of activation in order to generate an action potential in order to fire. So if it receives nine units of activation or eight units of activation, it won't be enough to generate an action potential. It has to get 10. So let's assume that there are several spots of light that you're looking at out in the environment, right? And so this spot of light stimulates this rod, this spot of light stimulates this rod, and so on. And let's assume that these are fairly weak lights. They're not really all that intense. So they don't really stimulate, you know, each light doesn't really stimulate each of these rods all that much, right? Maybe it only causes about two units of activation in each rod. So not a whole lot. So the question is, even though this is not really stimulating these rods all that much, right, because it's a pretty weak stimulus, pretty weak light, low intense, very dim, Will it be enough to trigger the ganglion cell, which basically has the final say in whether or not you perceive anything out here in the outside world? And the answer is yes, it will. Why? Because, as we said before, the activity of a cell depends on the total amount of input that it's receiving. Um, so as we have it drawn here, these are all excitatory connections. That's what these little V's here mean. Whenever we draw an inhibitory connection, it will look like a like an upside down T like that. So these are all excitatory connections. And so all of these signals summate. They get added together. So is it enough to initiate an action potential in this ganglion cell? Yes, two, four, six, eight, ten. We'll get this ganglion cell up to the ten units of activation that it needs to fire. And it will elicit an action potential from that ganglion cell, which will travel on up to the brain to tell your brain, hey, there's a stimulus out there in the environment. Even though it's weak, it's enough to trigger this ganglion cell because of all this convergence. Now imagine you're focusing directly on this light. 
right, fixated directly on it so that each of these little spots of light was projecting to your foveal cones. And so we have it drawn exactly the same way. This is a weak stimulus. Each light is fairly dim, not very intense, and stimulates each cone, but not a whole lot, right? Just like in the case of the rods, this light causes about two units of activation in this cone, um, and, and this light here causes about two units of activation in this cone, and so on, and so on, and so on. So each, each cone is, is really kind of only weakly stimulated, um, you know, producing about two units of activation. And let's assume, for the sake of simplicity, let's assume it's a, sim it's a, it's a general rule that ganglion cells need 10 units of activation in order to generate an action potential. Will any of these ganglion cells fire? No, right? Because each ganglion cell is only receiving two units of activation. And it's only receiving two units of activation because there's no convergence, right? This ganglion cell is literally only receiving input from this cone. So there's the fact that there's no convergence means that none of these ganglion cells will fire. And so if none of these ganglion cells fire, then no signals will be sent on up to the brain. And so it's as though literally you're not you're looking at nothing, right? Because there's no the signal stops here. And so that signal about what it is that you're looking at doesn't continue on up to the brain. So your brain has no way of knowing because these ganglion cells are silent, there's no way for your brain to know that there's a stimulus actually out in the environment. Okay, so, so this is what explains the fact that rods have greater sensitivity to light, which means that they will respond to um, uh, weaker stimuli, less intense light. And it's because of the fact that there's greater convergence of rods onto single ganglion cell as opposed to cones, which have really no convergence, or at least less conver convergence. Even, even cones in the periphery um, may have convergence, but not nearly as much as the rods have. And that's what gives rods um, better sensitivity to light than cones. Um, and it's this same fact that also produces this other difference between our rods and cones in terms of visual acuity. Um, so visual acuity, as we've said before, basically just means ability to see fine detail, ability to make out details of things. Um, cones in general, especially cones in the fovea, the foveal cones, have really, really good visual acuity. So the fovea, as we've said before, is the place in the retina that has the highest visual acuity, the best ability to see fine detail. And as we'll see on the next slide, the reason for this is the same as, as what we just talked about, and it has to do with the amount of convergence and the difference between the rods and cones in terms of amount of convergence. It's the fact that foveal cones have this one-to-one -one wiring um, between them and their ganglion cells that allows them to discriminate details. Um, let's take a look at that. Okay, um, So here are two neural circuits, um, again. For the rods um, up at the top, cones at the bottom. Let's draw just a line here to separate the rods from the cones. And we have sort of two situations. So this is the same neural circuit that we looked at before. There's a lot of um, convergence of these rods um, onto a single cone. And this is the same exact neural circuit over here. All of these rods, these five rods, are converging onto this single ganglion cell. And then down here are our, our um, foveal cones. So um, each cone getting its own ganglion cell. And the only thing that's different between um, the picture on the left and the picture on the right is the stimulus. So um, on the left over here, we have two spots of light right next to each other. Whereas over here on the right, we have two spots of light, but they're separated by, um, they're separated a little bit. So this spot of light stimulates this rod this spot of light stimulates this rod. This spot of light stimulates this rod. This rod is not stimulated because there's no light above it. And this spot of light stimulates this rod. And the point to make about this is that neither of these neural circuits knows 
whether you're looking at one spot of light or two spots of light. And the question is why? The answer is because the response of the ganglion cell is the same in both cases. Right? So if we assume that, you know, this is causing five units of activation here, and this is causing five units of activation here, and this also is causing five here and five here, but that'll be enough to stimulate this action, this, this um, ganglion cell. Um, this response is the same in both cases. So even though it's being caused by two different events, two spots of light that are close together, two spots of light that are far away, the signal that reaches your brain is the same in both cases, and so your brain all it's getting is this message. And so there's nothing different about these two messages. So your brain, you know, reasonably interprets these two things as the same thing. So there's no way for your brain to know that you're actually looking at two different things. And so because of this, because two spots of light that are close together and two spots of light that are far away from one another are treated the same way, means that rods have low visual acuity, right? They're not able to see the fine detail of that this is actually one spot of light and a separate spot of light and there's a little gap in between them, right? If you knew that this was two separate spots of lights, that would, that would be good visual acuity. That would be ability to see that detail. Okay, now what about, what about the cones? Um, The cones uh, is a different situation. The neural circuit that's drawn here on the right, this one, knows that you're looking at two spots of light. It has good visual acuity. It knows that you're looking at two separate events, two separate lights, instead of just a single light. Why? Because of the signals the particular signals from the ganglion cells that are getting sent on up to the brain, right? So this light is stimulating this cone. Nothing is stimulating this cone. And this light is stimulating this cone. So it's this pattern of activation. This ganglion cell will fire, send its signals up to the brain, and this ganglion cell will fire and send its signals on up to the brain. But this one won't fire, right? And so it's this lack of a signal in between that tells your brain, hey, these are two separate spots of light. And so it's in that way that your brain knows because this pattern of activation, yeah, action potentials from this ganglion cell action potentials from this ganglion cell, but no signals from the ganglion cell between them that tells you you're looking at two things instead of one thing. And so that ability to differentiate between two things is visual acuity, is fine detail, right? You're able to make out the fact, you're able to make out this detail that this is two spots of light instead of one spot of one big spot of light that would maybe, for example, take up that whole area. So it's the fact that there's this neural circuit in place here, um, a one-to-one -one relationship here between each cone and each ganglion cell. Um, this neural circuit here, as it's drawn, um, is what gives cones in the fovea the high visual acuity that they have, because there really is no convergence between um, cones and their ganglion cells. Okay, so it's a trade-off, right? The fact that rods have a greater amount of convergence than cones makes them more sensitive to light, which is what help, makes them helpful for, um, for seeing in the dark, but it gives them bad visual acuity. Um, and just the opposite for the cones, because they have, especially foveal cones, have really no convergence. They have um, low sensitivity to light. They're not very good in the dark. Um, but they have very high visual acuity. They're very good at seeing fine details and making out fine details, okay? And um, I think we're, that should just about cover it. Um, we're just about out of time for this video. Um, so um, I will leave it um, at that, okay?